Hello, welcome to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque on Thursday, May 21st at 7 Central Time, where we paint our subscription bisque box that we send out on the 5th of the month. And we paint it on our Thursday nights through the rest of the month. And this Thursday we should be finishing up our fairy box and we did go over because there's um, quite a bit of detail with our little fairy house and our fairies. So we've already done our house and our little girl, except for her eyes, work on our little boy. So we had already color washed him with the medium brown when we color washed our fairy house. So tonight we will work on our little boy. And we are using the acrylic stains because most of our subscribers don't have access to kilns and that's why we use the a lot of the non-fired products for our bisque boxes and we try to focus on techniques for that. So our little boy has the black brown on his rain boots and he's got the light brown on his skin. And last week we did some of the rust and the red on his little mushrooms because we had that in our brush. So looking at him, um, when you want to start, you want to do your deepest or lowest area first, which would have been his skin, and we already did that. And next we would probably do his shirt and his wings and his little pants. So we'll start with his little shorts, and for his shorts we're going to use our Duncan Biss Stain, our OS 460 Navy. So it's OS 460 Navy, Courtney, if you can add that in. So I'm going to shake these up because they've been sitting all week. And then I use a piece of foil because then I can just roll that up and throw that out. You can use a tile or a um, styrofoam plate or whatever works for you. So we'll put our... OS 460 Navy, just a little drop on our foil. And I got some on my thumb here. We'll have Navy everywhere. And that's not a real big area, so when you're looking at your areas to determine what size brush to use, you wouldn't use this big round one because it's as big as his all his shorts and you'd have blue everywhere. So we want something smaller that's more appropriate for our job. Since it's a little area. And he doesn't have any pants in the back. So I think we will go with our, that one's just a little bit. We'll go with this Artist Paintbrush, our 355 size 3. So you want about a size 3 round or flat. And this is a boar bristle brush, which is great for dry brushing. And then you just want to touch the edge of your brush into your navy and brush it out on your paper towel so you don't have a lot of color going on at one time on your piece and then you're just going to brush back and forth and you want to go across texture so leave the shading in your crevices and we just have a little area because it's just his little shorts here um, thank you Wanda on the congratulations for the retirement. It's been an interesting week already. It went fast. It went fast, Courtney says. Yes, it did. Had some appointments on Tuesday and someone backed into my Equinox, so I had to get estimates yesterday, so it's kind of turned out to be a little bit of a hectic week anyway. They had a ball hitch, so it did a pretty good number on the bumper. I'm just brushing back and forth on my little shorts here, working it over to the mushrooms. Working it up to his shirt. Courtney came and hauled molds on Tuesday from the dining room to the storage unit while I was at the appointment. So that was a good help. Well, we got 
half the dining room back, she says, yep. And then I took, no, I took another load yesterday when I went from the other side of the dining room, but there's another load there yet. So I'm just working my navy up into my um, crevice. I'm actually going to get it in the crevice because the navy is darker than the light, than the medium brown. Um, but I wanted that for his his other areas because I didn't want that to be real dark, so that's okay. We'll just work it down into those crevices. And then down on to the bottom edge of his shorts. Oh, I took them yesterday when I went and got the clay and the talc for the slip to make, mix the slip. Nope, this guy's talking, Courtney. The tablet's talking to me, and it's delayed. I'm getting confused and not know where I'm at or what I'm doing. Thank you. So I'm just trying to get underneath the little front edge of his shorts a little bit. I don't want that uh, medium brown in there because it's a lighter shade than the navy. And with that little brush, you can just gradually brush it right to where you want it. So yesterday we did have the little ordeal with the kiln. And actually that started the morning, Tuesday morning. I had fired it on Monday and it was a glaze load. And so it was done on Monday night. And then I peeked in it Tuesday morning before I left to go to the doctor, which I opened it maybe an inch at the most just to see um, that the pumpkin was okay. And then yesterday morning when I looked at it, um, you seen the picture of what everything looked like. So today, actually last night that I actually unloaded it, and there were eight sets of mushrooms in there, and only two, four of the stems of the mushrooms um, hadn't shattered or exploded or whatever you want to talk about, call it. Um, but during the day yesterday, those other sets also um, shattered. So I I'm actually don't believe that peaking in the mold or in the kiln Tuesday morning caused the problem. I believe the problem was that the glaze was not dry um, when I fired it. Normally when I glaze something, I let it sit overnight and I glazed the inside of those mushroom tops and bottoms on Monday morning and then I fired them Monday afternoon and I believe that's actually what the cause of the problem was, is that the glaze wasn't dry. Um, otherwise they would have shattered right away in the kiln. They wouldn't have shattered throughout the day yesterday after they were out. Um, because when they came out, they were completely cool. Because the kiln had sit, sat since Monday night. So I just wanted to um, talk about that because that's a learning experience for everyone. Um, you have to make sure that your glaze is dry too when you are when you fire it. You can't just glaze it and then fire it. So make sure your glaze, um, if you glaze a piece that it's very dry. Um, I've never had that happen, but normally I do glaze one night and then I let it sit and then fire it the next night. Um, so I'm fairly confident that that was actually the problem and not the peaking. Um, the peaking would have made the glaze, um, the glaze crack crack more, not the whole piece um, shatter like that. So Courtney says we got a question. So Courtney says the question is can you, let's see if I can get it to come up, can you recycle the busted pieces, can you melt it into make new slip? Um, once they're fired like that, nope, all you can do is throw them out. Um, if you have greenware, um, you can recycle the greenware and, and reclaim it. 
Uh, but uh, the bisque that's been fired and now that has glaze on it and that's just garbage. It's in the garbage. So I have our little blue um, shorts done with our navy. And I um, did it into the crevices too because I didn't want that medium brown that was lighter than the navy. So I did fill that in with the with the navy. So now I'm going to grab our um, medium blue. And that's going to be our Bisque Duncan Stain OS457 Medium Blue. And we'll just need a little bit. And I'm going to continue with my same dirty brush that has the navy in it already, but that'll give us a gradual change of color. And I'm just going to grab some of my medium blue, brush it out on my paper towel. And now I'll brush back and forth on his little navy pants going across my inseams. And that'll give you more of a um, blue jean type look. Again, you can do your pieces in any any colors that you like. I just picked the blue and the green. It was nice boy colors. So that was a good good experience. Make sure your um, your glaze when you glaze the piece that it's thoroughly dry before you um, fire it. So I'm just going, I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch of my navy blue all the way around because that's giving my nice shadow and now I'm going more heavy with my medium blue on the high spots because that would, we would have more light hitting his pants in that area and then we have our shadowing where the shirt is overlapping and the um, wings are overlapping so we want that nice shadow there and in and, and his, where his legs are together. And we'll grab a little more and go a little more right on this high parts here just to give it a little more highlight and that'll give it more shape. So there we got his little pants done. That's pretty quick. Little shorts I should say. Alrighty and then his little shirt is the green so we're going to go with our Lexington green. Um, so Lisa asked what kind of glaze were you using on the items that broke. It was just the Duncan Brilliance, a clear glaze on the mushrooms. It was the insides of them. And then the pumpkin had the Duncan, I think it was the Envisions, orange pumpkin and bottle green on the stem. Um, it, it was a bright orange instead of the Colors of Earth um, Harvest Pumpkin, which is more of a matte, deep um, rusty looking orange. They're both nice colors. So now I have our um, Doc Holiday DH26 Lexington Green. And Courtney stepped out for a minute so she'll put that in when she comes back. So it's our DH26 Lexington Green. And I'll actually use uh, my same dirty brush because the green is close to the blue family and I'll just work it in there a little bit. And then I'm just going to brush it out on my paper towel. And we may have to switch to a little bit smaller brush because of the little area. So now I'm just going to dry brush on his shirt. Try not to get it on his arm. And on his hands. And I'm just going back and forth real gently. I'm not rubbing real hard. So it was just a cone 06 glaze. Um, there's nothing special about it. Um, that's the same glaze I've used out of the same gallon jug for um, the last batch, so I'm pretty confident it was not the glaze. Had it been um, a different bottle of glaze, I mean, then there could have been an error in the glaze, but it was the same glaze that I've used and didn't have problems with out of the same gallon, so I'm, I'm sure that that's not the problem. The problem was that the glaze wasn't dry thoroughly. And I um, thin it about three parts glaze, clear glaze to one part water. And then I pour it inside 
the mushroom tops and the mushroom bases and then you swirl it and then you keep rotating it till you get it all covered. And so it was probably just a little thicker um, than um, normal too so that it would have taken just a little longer um, to dry. And so it probably dried from like 9 a.m. till 2 a.m. till 2 p.m. when I fired it. Um, where, where I had been letting them dry overnight and haven't had any problems. Um, so that's the way I'll continue to do my glazing is to let it dry overnight. So it's nice and dry. So we're getting our little shirt nice and green and we just got a little area over here too next to the shovel and it looks like I missed his pants over here, his little shorts, so we'll have to come back and do those. And I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush. Let's see, what do we have? Do we have a little flat one? I'm going to switch to my artist paintbrush, my size one flat, so I can get in that little area there and we'll start with the green and then we'll go back and do the blue. I'm just going to brush back and forth till I get that little green area filled in, trying not to get his arm all full. Um, so Vicki's wondering what color did we use on the back of the mushrooms? On the back of him we used the rust. Um, you can use the Doc Holliday rust. Oh, you may, or are you um, wondering about the big mushrooms? Um, Vicki, let me know if you want to know about the big mushrooms or, or if you're talking about these mushrooms. E either way, it's the same color. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. So these little mushrooms or our big mushroom, which is our next box. Um, this is base coated with the rust and then painted with the real red. And then the circles are done with the white. And then the base is base coated with um, let me see, light brown, and then dry brushed with the ivory. So these guys were done the same way with the um, rust and then the red, real red, and then we'll do the stems the same way. So they're actually done the same way. So it's kind of a cute little garden so it'll all kind of go together. Um, the fairy house, the mushroom, and the little butterflies and then next month is the frog with the um, two two little gnomes the one with the butterfly and one with the dragonfly and then another dragonfly so they'll all all three months kind of go together you could put them all together out in the garden so I'm just dry brushing his little shirt here getting that little corner green and I could turn my flat brush on its side and that helps control where it's going. So you can see you can dry brush the little areas um, just as well as the big areas. You just need smaller brushes and you can use the round or the flat. Um, I just change them up sometimes and um, I like the flat with these little areas because I can turn it on its end and kind of control where that brush is going more. And we'll get his little edge of his sleeve here. So I'm just using the um, Doc Holliday Lexington Green DH26, Courtney. And if you get a little green on his arm, that's okay. You can go back and um, touch that up because we'll have to do that too here. You can get it down in the crevice there and up closer to his hands. So let's see, do we have any other questions? Vicki says, did you go to the ground in black brown on the back of either side of the mushrooms? Let's see here. So yes, I have the black brown and then I have the medium brown. So you can see that. So we'll, we'll get there too. Um, we use the black brown on the on the dirt around the mushrooms, and then medium brown. That was for Vicky. Yeah. Yep. 
have the same question problem. Oh, yep. Yep. I'm just going to work my green around his little hand and the little shovel and his arm here. Medium brown. That's probably on the instruction sheet too. No. So I'm just working my green up to my wings. So Lisa's wondering how do I like retirement? It's wonderful. Um, it took a lot of stress away of um, worrying about how to work and um, get our boxes done. Because now instead of working, I can work on the boxes, although this week was a little different. Um, I had some other stuff to take care of. and But next week should be a lot better. I do have most of the box pulled or pulled poured for June. It's ready to be um, cleaned and that's what I'll be doing next week. And then I'll um, keep pouring a few more and then I'll also pull the July molds. Although I've been pouring one of the pieces for the July mold because I only had two, two molds so I needed to be pouring them in order to get enough poured. And the other one I have three of, so I'll be able to pull that next week and start pouring that. And then I'll also pull the August mold because we only have two of that one also. Um, and I'll be pouring the August and July molds probably towards the end of next week. So, so it's really nice as I can just um, focus on our boxes and not have to worry about when am I going to have time to do our boxes because I'm working was working during the day. And I went to the bank, um, was it yesterday morning, which is really nice to go during the day at, when everyone's at work and there's not six cars deep in the drive up, drive up. So there's some advantages. It's, it was pretty nice. I'm just working our green around his little neckline. It looks like I need to bring it down here a little more in this corner. And just kind of nudge it in there slowly and then we'll nudge it out here by his hand some more. Um, I haven't had time to get out into the garden yet. Um, that needs a whole lot of work. The pond filters need to be hooked up and all that kind of stuff but it's going to have to, I'm not sure if I'll get to it this weekend or not. And then I got leaves in the pathways and it's kind of a mess, but that's all right. We'll get to it. And let's see, there's no green on the back. So we have this little shirt kind of all outlined here with our green, our Lexington green. And now we're going to go to our Lime Burst, which will be our Mako Lime Burst SS376. And again, we're going to shake that up. And we'll just use a drop. And I'm going to use my same flat brush, my dirty brush, because it'll go make a nice gradual change of color that way. And I'll dip in my lime burst and brush it out on my paper towel a little bit, kind of work that color in there. And now we want to leave our Lexington green closer to the edges and then have more of the lime burst in the middle to highlight our green shirt. And I'm just rubbing back and forth. You can rub in little circles, little half circles, little C strokes, um, just to highlight, bring in that nice lime spring green color. And then your Lexington green is your nice shadow color. And then I didn't get any, buy any annuals yet or for the flower boxes yet or anything either. Usually I have that stuff all planted and done with, but um, just not enough time. Still um, kind of playing catch up yet, so I think it'll take about a month just to get orders caught up and then 
I can probably start getting things around the house caught up on that have been let go. So that'll be nice. So let's see, what else do we have? Checking mine as you go and discover you didn't even paint the ground behind the boy. Well, that's okay, Joyce. You can always go back and uh, paint it. Um, so Connie's asking, what um, do you spray with sealer when done? Yes, we spray seal them. I like the, um, it used to be the porcelain and now it's the matte. It's a completely flat finish. Although we do a brush on the glitter on their little wings. wings. So let's see what else do we have. So Shirley says the best time is you wake up the regular time on Monday morning and you remember you don't have to go to work. Yep, that was pretty nice. Didn't have to punch that clock. And Lisa says, do you also work with translucents? Yes, I've worked with translucents. Um, I'm working with um, Sherry Porter, um, the brush lady, and she's also a um, fashion use distributor, so dealer, so I'll be um, working on getting certified through her. Um, the COVID stuff kind of changed things around because the Ohio show was canceled and we don't know if the August show here in uh, Waukesha will go on or not and if she'll be there. So, so we're working on it. It, it all takes time. Um, the um, I have used the Mako and the Kimple ones before. They're a little bit different than the um, Fashion Muse ones. But it's basically, the basics are still there. So, in fact, I still have, a, I have my um, tackle box. It was a fishing tackle, tackle box. It's full of the Mako translucents yet. I um, dug that out a while ago. And, and because they're oil-based, they're all in good Good condition yet. They're, they're okay. Translucents are okay. I, I'm not a real big fan of them. It's just another way of doing, of painting things. Um, we are working on project videos. That's one of the things that we'll be doing now that I'm retiring. Um, but like I said, we're, we're I'm still playing catch up. It's only the first week and. I got a lot of stuff to get caught up on just at home and orders and just stuff in general. So in, in a month it'll be a should make a big difference here for us. At least that's the hope. So I'm just using our lime burst to highlight our shirt, leaving the Lexington green along the edge for our shadow which gives our piece nice shape. And I'm using a number one flat dry brush. It's our Artist Paint Brush brand that we get. Um, they're really nice brushes. Um, this, this brush is actually in your May box if, in case you um, opened it. This is the brush that we included as the extra in your May box. So you can actually use it on your fairies if you wanted. So if you're a subscriber from now through December, you'll have the full set of the flat and the round dry brushes as the extra um, in your this box for that for the month, those months. You're getting a brush a month. So I'm just brushing out my little line burst here and we'll see Courtney says we've got a question. What's the difference between the translucents and the metallics? Um, completely different. So there's rub-on metallics, which um, they don't compare to those either. And then there are the acrylic, um, I have the silver. So these are the rub-on metallics that were in, which box were they in? The February box? Um, and this is a, more of a, a cream and you rub it on. And then this is a metallic stain, 
and you, you paint it on just like your acrylic paints. The translucents you paint on and then you rub them off. Um, it's, it's a complete, completely different product altogether. Um, yeah, we don't have one to show you here. They, the, they're very small bottles, but they go a long, long ways. It, it is, it's a paint. Um, you base coat your piece, and then you, you can seal it or not seal it, and then you um, paint it on, and then you rub it off with a, um, either a piece of cotton t-shirt type material or those blue workshop type um, paper towels that are a little bit tougher than the regular paper towels. And it's, it's, it kind of like stains it, I guess you could say, but yet they don't, one, one of the advantages with them is they don't dry fast like the acrylic stains do, so you can blend the colors together because I, if this was a translucent, this green would be wet yet, and I could come along with maybe blue, and I could blend the two colors together. So that's one of the things with the translucents is you can blend the colors together because they, it's called staying open, meaning that it doesn't dry. It, it stays um, wet so that you can move it around um, and blend it with the other colors. And you can wipe more off and wipe more back on. So I hope that helps with the translucents. But they don't compare to the metallics at all because the metallics are just an acrylic stain that you, you just paint them on, just like we do with our acrylic um, paint. And you can wipe the acrylic melt and metallics off too and like antique with those. Let's see if we have any more questions. It's still at the same spot. Okay, so we have our little boy done with his little shirt. There's no little shirt in the back. Um, we forgot our little green, um, or little blue shorts over here. So I'm gonna use the same brush and go back into my navy. And I'll just work that up in there. And we gotta get that little slice of shorts here in this um, with the flat, you can turn it on its edge to get in that little skinny area. And if you get a little bit on the um, shovel handle, that's okay because we can, the brown will cover that up. And we'll take it right to the um, red mushroom there. And we'll brush that out and I'll grab a little bit of the light blue and brush that out. And now we'll just highlight that just a little bit, and that's kind of in a dark area, so you don't need a whole lot of highlighting on there with the medium blue. So just a little bit. There. So we'll put that aside. And let's see, what are we going to do next? We have the leaf on there, the black brown on the rain boots we have. So... Did we do his face, his wings? That's later, okay. So we'll put our black brown, we'll start with that because that's our darker color. So I'm gonna go with our Duncan OS473, our black brown. And just a drop of it. And let's see if I got a little brush here. I'm gonna go with my one round my artist paintbrush, my size one round. And let's grab a little bit of the black brown and brush that out. And I wanna get his little, um, the ground that's around the mushrooms back here. We could have done that before, but I, I didn't do it when I did the boots. And we'll just work it up, do our mushrooms, excuse me. Has anyone got holiday plans for the weekend since we have a nice big three-day weekend? Um, they kind of opened our state back up 
um, quite a bit. I know every, not everything is open, but a lot of things are open. I met tons of campers and boats on the way down here. Kayaks and ATVs and UTVs and trailers and lawnmowers and boats and kayaks and we're supposed to have kind of a nice weekend in the 70s and about a 40% chance of rain for every day. Um, Courtney and I are both taking all three days off. Um, from what time tomorrow? <laughs> so we can tell them. Like Saturday through Monday? So we'll answer messages um, tomorrow night yet, but then um, we're both taking off um, Saturday through Monday, so then you'll hear from us on Tuesday morning because neither one of us have had much time off. Um, so we're both just going to take a break from everything and <laughs> and um, so um, if you message us over the weekend, um, don't look for an answer, but we'll try to get caught up on Tuesday. And if we don't get through everything on Tuesday, um, she'll get to you on by when through Wednesday then. Um, if some, um, Cordy says everything that's purchased is caught up on shipping, so that'll stay caught up. Shipping's slow though. Um, Shipping with the post office is slow. So I gotta grab a little more black brown here so we can do the, so these little rain boots did part of it, but now the, the ground is underneath there. So we wanna get get the rest of that so that it's nice and um, done looking. We'll bring it right up to the mushrooms. Um, black brown, OS473. Um, so you, you, you can message us over the weekend, but don't, um, we won't be answering until Tuesday, so we're just, um, Courtney asked if I'm camping. I'm, I'm not sure because the camper is not down by the woods yet that I know of. Um, no, I'm not pitching a tent <laughs> if it's going to rain. Um, I don't know because I don't know if I'm going to do the pond or camp. Pond kind of needs to be done. Cordy says her garden sprouted. She has a um, raised bed garden that Jason made her. She's got radishes and lettuce coming up. Um, her peonies are ready to bloom. Mine are just peeking through the ground. Well, it, we're, we're dry brushing. The thing is, I wanted the light brown for, I didn't want the accents on the face and the wings to be really dark. So you could have color washed it with a the, the dark brown, but I, I didn't want that. So I'm, I'm just um, filling it in, kind of dry brushing it in. It's, it's still dry brushing, I'm just dry brushing it in um, completely. And then the medium brown will do the highlighting. You, you could have color wash these dark areas where you wanted it dark with the darker and then color wash the light color on the on the other areas but that's kind of putsy to do all that with the, the different colors so it's still dry brushing it's just I, I don't like the light brown coming through as the shadow next to the dark color because it really should be the dark dark color it just looks better that way So it's still, I'm still dry brushing it. It's just that I'm completely dry brushing it. So see, that's his shovel. That'll be silver. And we got the bottom done. So let's see what was, I gotta watch, look at my instructions. Oh, his hair. We want his hair to be the black brown too, medium brown on the hair. So we're gonna go with the medium brown on his hair. So I have the OS 471 Duncan medium brown and that is our color wash color. But I wanna fill it in just a little more. That way the yellow will um, cover better. 
So I'm using my same dirty brush because it's in the brown family yet. And we're just going to dry brush on there a little bit to get rid of the white. I could have probably not wiped the hair. Alrighty, and now I want, and you can have his hair any color that you want. So I kind of wanted him to have blonde hair, so I'm going to use the lemon peel, the OS434 lemon peel. And I don't want it like this bright lemon peel yellow, I just want it a little kind of a dirty blonde look. So I'm going to use my same brown brush and just grab a little yellow and brush it out on my paper towel. And I want it to dry. In the brush, I can just dry brush right over his hair here, and now that medium brown gives us our shadows. And because I use the brown brush, it's not super, super yellow, just kind of a dirty, blondy yellow. Well, it looks like we forgot to do his hat, too, with the blue, as long as we had the blue, but that's all right. Okay, so that's about, maybe a little more. Between the shovel and his boots, where? Oh, what color goes between the shovel and his boots on the front? That's silver. The whole silver for the well the, the 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 brown is looks like I put the dark brown in there looks like I put the dark brown down in the black brown down in there because it's kind of the dirt so I'll have to do that on this one too the black brown is OS473 Kind of the dirt color. So now we got his hair about where I want it. Okay, let's see, we'll go, that was my brown brush too, so let's see if we can get some black brown and get that down in there. I'll just use my same, same brush, get it nice and black brown here. And I'll have to get it on the shovel in order to get it down in there. And that's probably more of a wet wet brush than a dry brush because you're just filling in that area more than dry brushing it. <laughs> if you would have colored washed and would like the darker brown it would have filled that in but I really didn't want that um, over the, the face and the feathers or his fairy wings. I really didn't want that black brown in, in those areas. So now I have that filled in with the black brown too. So let's see, what do we got next? Lemon peel. Now I have ivory on the wings. Alrighty, so we'll grab our ivory. So we have our Duncan OS 342 ivory. But actually let's do our hat because we forgot our hat too. We'll go back and do that first. Um, according to the, I got them out of frame. Where at? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go back to our navy so we can do our hat. Our OS 460. And mine's kind of dried up, so I got to get a little more. And I'm just going to grab my navy brush that I had before and get it going. I'm just gonna brush across my my lines so they don't fill in. I want that in there. Huh? Oh, he's not so. Oh, Cordy thought he was ugly. He's not so bad now. <laughs> oh, yeah. They usually get ugly before they get cute. So 
let's see what else is going on. Last night or yesterday, late afternoon, I mixed slip for the first time. That went okay. Um, it has to um, sit, like it rest, it says for 24 to 48 hours. Um, I'll, I'll let it rest for the 48, so tomorrow night I could pour it if I wanted. So again, we have the medium brown in, in the crevice of our hat, which is our, well, should be darker because the navy, navy is darker. I, I don't like that in there, so I'm actually just going to dry brush with my crevice and fill that in, and the navy can be the shadow color with the, once the um, medium blue is on it. Because that, that's a light color, and it doesn't shadow when it's a light color like that on that dark color. And so to dry brush those in, you just go with them instead of against them. Oh, that's too wet. When it's all shiny like that, that's too wet. You gotta brush your brush out on your paper towel some more. So the mixing the slip wasn't hard, I just had to follow the the directions and weigh weigh and measure things. So now we're gonna work our blue right up to our hair here, being a little careful. with my crevice again to fill it in. So once we put the light blue on our hat, the navy will be our shadow color in the crevice. Because it doesn't look right with the light brown in there. anchored on the table so it isn't shaking all over so you can see what I'm doing. And now we got to get underneath his little rim of his hat. So the flat brush would probably work good um, in this area if you have it because you could turn it on its edge, its chisel, and get it down in that little crevice there a little easier than the round brush. But if you start away from the hair and then just slowly go down towards it, you can see where your brush is and where the blue is going. And then you can just stop when they meet. So the round one does work too. So last weekend we got all the molds out of one storage shed. I think you guys seen that and into the other one. So it was a good day's work by everyone. Huh? And it wasn't too hot, no. Now it's kind of hot out already to be doing mold work. <laughs> so I'm just going to come back and check his hat here. I missed his whole brim. So those were the ones that were just in the storage shed. Um, they would have been our Darboy molds that we didn't know what, for sure what we all had. And then... We see we went up to Florence and got a load up there. We knew what we knew what we had. We had because we picked them, but none of them were logged. So everything that's in the storage shed is logged again. We know what we have. And then Courtney took what was in the half of what was in the kitchen over to the storage shed, but those aren't logged. They're just in the middle. And then I took a load over yesterday. I got one more load in the kitchen that's got to go. 
And then we have my garage is full. And those are logged on shelves, but um, I think we're going to move them over there too so every, everybody's in one spot. So now we're going to go to our OS457, our medium blue, and highlight our hat. And I'm going to use my same blue brush. I'm just going to dip in the medium blue with it. And brush it out good. And now we can go across our texture and that navy will be what's in our crevice as our shadow. Which is much better than that medium brown that was lighter. And then we have a lady that we're uh, purchasing from will be moving those molds at some point. Cody says hopefully not in the dead of summer, at least not on a hot day, right? And then we were going to go up to another place and look, but that's kind of on hold because of the virus stuff, so we didn't get there. And let's see what else. We have to decide what molds we're ordering for our October through probably February boxes. Um, we're thinking they're not going to be the Clay Magic molds. They'll be from a different company. Um, we're going between two, so we'll have to decide which, which one. So we'll have to get to work on those here pretty quick too because we have to get them so they can get dried out and so I'm just brushing across my little uh, indents in his hat so that the navy blue is down in there it gives a nice dark shadow for it to give it give his hat more shape we'll get a lot more on the brim of his hat here because the sun would be hitting that a little more around the back here. And I think I need a little more medium blue. And we want to get under his brim here a little bit. Hopefully I'm in the picture there yet, huh, Courtney? Or did I move out again? I'm just brushing back and forth, letting the navy blue closer to his ha hair because that's where it would be darker. There'd be less light under there. And then we'll come back on the outside here. Get some more on the brim because there'd be a lot of light on there hitting that. And work it around up on the top. And let's see what else. Where's our hat on our instructions? Where's my hat? And a little bit of white, it says. So now I'm going to use my Duncan OS 431, my white, and just give it a little more highlight. And we'll just take a drop. And I'll use my same brush again with the blue already in it so we have a nice gradual change of color. And I just want to get the little brim of his hat where the light would really be hitting it. Kind of that washed out denim look to it. And just a little bit on the underside because it is tipped up so the light would be hitting it. I'm just brushing back and forth right along the rim. And then we'll bring it back onto the front here a little bit because the light would be shining right down on there most likely. And bring it just a little bit, getting less as you get to the back, more up on top. So more up on top and less down on the bottom because 
This would be nice all shadow down there from the, the top of the hat. So you want to think about where the sunlight would be hitting your piece that you're working on. So this this top half of this hat would be shadowing that bottom half, so we won't have much white back here, but we're going to have more up on the top because there would be more light hitting it. We'll come back and look and see how our little, bring a little more on the side here. And that should be good. So now I think we can go to our little fairy wings and I'm going to use my OS 432 ivory and you can use any color you want. It's just the colors I used when I did it. OS 432 ivory. And we can go to a little bit bigger brush because we got a pretty good size area. I'll use my size 3 flat. And I'll Grab my ivory and brush it out. And now I want to brush across my texture here and leave the medium brown in the crevices. Bring it right up to his shirt. Not all the way because you can leave a little bit of the medium brown as your um, shadow. Maybe about an eighth of an inch you can leave. And then from there out, go with your ivory. Brush back and forth across. Again, if you went with it, it would fill it in, but we kind of do want that nice uh, medium brown in our crevices. Um, Linda says, can you purchase your drying refs? Um, yes, you can. Are they on the .com page or not? Oh, okay, Cordy says she put the link for it. Um, yes, we have Jason making more. Um, if you're a subscriber, they can ship in your subscription box, and you would get free shipping. And you can also order extra pegs, too. I really like it. I used it um, today when I was painting those crackpot um, birds that's an order. And I can just put them on there, and you don't have to worry about the bottoms getting all full of paint from what's on the table. And So I painted the bottom half, and then I... Um, put them on there and then let that dry and then I went and grabbed them and painted the top half and then put them back on there and it really works nice. I even balanced the large pumpkin on there when I did the bottom of it. Um, I would do the bottom of a big item first and then balance it on there and let it dry and then do my um, sides. I had done it just the opposite but I would do the bottom first and then balance it on there. Now we're going to turn him around and get our ivory on the back. And I'm just going to brush. You want to get this edge too. I'm just going to brush across it. So I, to do the big items, I just put four of them like a box, one in each corner, and then I could balance my um, pumpkin on those four instead of stripping it over the top of them like I did with the crack pot um, pieces. Those are um, cute little birds. I'm um, doing one as a cardinal, one as a um, chickadee, one as a bluebird, one as a yellow finch, and I think one as a red winged blackbird. So they'll have two of each. Those also come in a um, ornament size. They're really cute little, little ornament birds. So just dry brushing real, real lightly, going back and forth across my um, grooves here, my indents, my crevices, so I'm not filling them in. Leaving a little bit of brown, um, like along the mushrooms for shadowing, and kind of up the middle because that would be darker in there so I won't go all the way to the middle. I'll let some of that medium brown in there. And same with the hat. I'll come about an eighth of an inch away from the hat so we have that shadowing next to the 
hat in between the fairy's wings. And you would have a lot more of your ivory out on the edge because they're, they would be thinner and getting more light, so they would be lighter. You just keep brushing back and forth till you get the degree of ivory that you'd like. And I kind of, I'm just working my, started on this side and I'm just working my way around. Now this is, this will be dry by the time I come back around because I'll just keep going around. And that way you can keep building up your um, layer of paint. Brush back and forth. And if you would go in your crevice, with your crevice and fill it in, you could just take your medium brown and repaint your fairy feathers and fairy wings and then just um, leave it dry and then dry brush it. So you can't really ruin it, just have to go back and put your medium brown back on so you have it back in those crevices. And just go back and forth. And we got to turn them around so I can get on this side. And you got to do the top. And here I missed the top because I didn't turn it to see that. So those wings would be the ivory too. I know I won't be going anywhere near downtown because there will be people everywhere the way it looks with all that traffic that was on the road today when I came. Um, uh, the town I live in is a kind of a touristy lake lake town, so it brings a lot of um, summer, well, and winter traffic too, because of the snowmobiles and fishing, and um, more in the summer. So I usually stay away from stores downtown in the town area when it comes to the weekend, because there's just too much, too many people, too much traffic. The only thing I might go is I'll go and get ice cream like on a Sunday night, but otherwise on the weekends I stay away from town. There's just too much, too much traffic, too many people, too many accidents. <laughs> and just brush it on my ivory till I get a nice even coat. I just basically want my medium brown down in my crevices. Cordy says, how's the cat adjusting to being home? Not very, me being home, not very good. Is he um, He wants me to get up at like 6 o'clock. <laughs> he comes on the bed and jumps on the bed and goes around and jumps over me and meows. and I would kind of like to sleep till 7. Yeah, Cordy asked if I put food in his bowl. There's always food in his bowl. So now I'm going to turn him around and get the edge, the edges here. We're not getting him a friend to play with. <laughs> Unless you're going to come and visit him. <laughs> now we're around to the front and now our back will be drying and we can do that another coat on there. Just brushing back and forth. It's nice and light, and the paint just builds itself up. It just takes layers and layers. Well, those with um, with these artist paintbrush, it goes on pretty nice. It's not. It seems like it goes on better than with the blue blue brushes. Faster, yep. Yeah. I'm just brushing back and forth. I'm kind of going with the curve of the wing. And I'm going to turn my brush on its chisel, so to speak, and kind of work it up to his sleeve without getting on it, but yet letting the brown between the sleeve and the very wings. I keep wanting to call them feathers, but they're wings. 
I don't know if I'm tired, but... I didn't sleep very good last night. It's kind of warm in the house. I went downstairs, I think at midnight, and got the fan. <laughs> I mean, it's not that it's hot, it's only in the 70s, it's not that. I'm gonna stand him back up so I can get on the top of his wing here. And make sure I got the edges. So you do have to change the directions that you're looking at them so you can make sure you get all the different angles. Oh, but I'm going with it instead of across it. And I have more on this one than the other one, so we're going to come back and get a little more on this one. So you want them to be about the same degree of ivory. See, I have a rose bush I should probably move this weekend or it'll never get moved again. It's right on the corner of the sidewalk and it kind of strangles you when you want to get in the house. That's probably one thing I should do. I've been going to do that all spring and now spring is gone already. So I need a little more ivory. We have to do our mushroom stems too. Alrighty, now it looks a little more comparable to the other one. Get on the ends here. Get on the ends of this one. And come back around. We'll go one more coat around. Just going back and forth across the texture. Doesn't seem like it should be Memorial Weekend already. It seems like we should have a whole nother week yet. Mm -hmm. Cody says somebody got that wrong. The calendar, I guess. Blame it on the calendar. So Vicki says, what time zone are we in? We are in central time. So it is, um, what time is it right now? I can't see on here. It's 8.08, 8.08 you said? 8.08 .08 Central Time, p.m. 8 p.m. Central Time. We are in Wisconsin. We are, um, Courtney's in Appleton and I'm in Shano. I'm about an hour north of her. And I'm about an hour north of um, the Green Bay Packers, Green Bay, if that helps. Where it's considered Central Wisconsin. It's kind of East Central though, I guess you could say more than anything. I just want to get these guys looking the same. And we'll come around and make sure I got the edges good. And our videos are saved, so even if you can't watch on Thursday nights, you can watch. Um, they should be on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, technical Courtney said we have technical, we did have technical problems, so okay. she did not upload those to YouTube um, for the last month. Um, we'll get them um, uh, back on there. But they would be on the Facebook page under the video tab. Um, but we had trouble because they updated the... Yeah, so they updated how you... Um, connect and stuff so they we had trouble with the audio and trouble with choppiness and um, so Wanda says where can you get the little gems you should have a little baggie in your box that had um, that had 
for um, but otherwise if you go to like Hobby Lobby in the scrapbooking aisle, right? Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of gems, different colors and rhinestones. rhinestones yep. But they should be. Yeah, but um, you should have some in your box for your little girl. But otherwise, if you want more, you can just go to like Hobby Lobby or Joanne's Fabrics, any of the craft places, and they will be where the scrapbooking stuff is. Um, they're usually on a whole. Um, you can get a few on a sheet or a whole lot on a sheet. Now we're gonna. He's looking pretty good at even the little um, wings. So it's gonna stay very good again. So now we're gonna try to get our little stems on our mushrooms with the ivory too, and I'll just brush back and forth here. Oh, let's see. Carrie says, "How are you like in retirement?" It's great. <laughs> and I don't have to punch the time clock and I can focus on our boxes, which I haven't really had the time to truly focus on them, even though we've been working on them. We've just been, um, I don't know how to explain it, really working our butts off just to get enough done um, for the subscribers and don't, not having anything extra. and. Um, it would be nice to have all the bisque poured, cleaned and fired like two months in advance and at, at this point where I'm still doing it the week before the box is shipping and that, that's really stressful. Um, so the plan is to actually get like two months ahead so that we know, I mean we know who is subscribed, we have you down so we know how many boxes we need and then if we have new subscribers we can just add those few just just to get ahead and not have to try to pack all of them in two days because we could have them packed sooner because we know um, how many we need it's just that I didn't have time to work and do that so that's the the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to is actually getting um, the the boxes made ahead and then just adding like the new subscribers or people that are one-time buyers that just want one box so that's that's kind of my the biggest thing is just getting the the monthly boxes way way ahead and then working on um, the videos that we, we, Courtney and I have talked about that we're, we're working on a little bit behind the scenes. There's a lot of planning going on with that, um, with our bisque. So that'll be um, fun to, once we get to that point, and we'll be doing those too. But right now, just getting the, the bisque pieces I had made ahead for the boxes so that I'm not killing myself that last week trying to get them all done and worrying about the kiln breaking down and all of that kind of stuff because that's really stressful. So I'm getting my ivory on the undersides of my little mushrooms here and I realized that I um, missed this little red one here so we'll have to get that one in red. It, it probably could be made a stem too but I looked at the other guy and I made it, um, the original one I made it as a red uh, mushroom, so we'll do that with this one. So I'll have to get some rust and we'll have to touch up our mushrooms because I got ivory everywhere. But we have to put a little bit of white on first, so I won't do that yet. So I'm just going to use my rust and get in here to get this little guy so we can get him red. And I'll probably touch up this ivory because it'll touch up better than the red will and then I can put red over the top of that so when they're so little you do have to go back and touch things up a little bit sometimes even with a regular um, paintbrush now I got my red and we'll get that little guy red instead of the medium brown because he looked like he didn't belong there. And we'll try to get a little bit of our 
red brushed back on our mushrooms where we got ivory on them. Courtney says, what am I doing tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm pouring. Um, I don't know, I didn't actually think about, oh, I have to finish those crackpot birds. So it's going to be a half a day at least. And I'll get the um, June box painted this weekend, even though I'm taking off, I'll probably do that because painting is something I enjoy, so probably try to get the frog and the gnomes painted. So we got that done, so now I'm going to go back to my ivory brush and I'm going to grab a little bit of white and do just the tips of his um, wings with the white. Just to lighten them up a little bit. Again, I'm going across it. I don't, I don't think there's a lack of anything to do. <laughs> Just, to, oh, I'm supposed to take off. Yeah, I know. Well, not tomorrow. <laughs> I got till tomorrow night. And I need a little more weight. Uh, I might go to the farm and see if they'll move the camper down to the woods. See what's going on, what that situation is. My, oh, I got rust on there now. I don't know where that all came from. Huh? Oh boy. Oh, now I just got the red all over it. I really made a mess. So that's what happens when you're trying to rush. I'm just using my good old spit. Because that blue is dry, it kind of wiped right off. That's all right. Yeah, right? That's what happens when you rush me. So we'll get our white back on our edges of our fairy wings so I have a lot and then I go less, less. Because the edges would have more light on them, hitting them, so they'd be lighter. Same with the back. Okay, and then we can take, um, we have our shovel, and we need to get him our medium brown, and I got some medium brown, and I'm actually going to use just a regular paintbrush for that, and I'm going to paint my brown handle. Let's paint our handle out quick. It's just easier to... Um, painted because there's not, it's so little. And I'll paint down to the silver part. So even though, even though we're dry brushing, sometimes you have little details like this that you have to just um, paint it. Um, like the eyes as well. And I'm going to wash that out. And we're going to grab some silver here quick. So now I have our Duncan Ultra Metallic Silver UM956, Courtney. UM956 and that'll just take a drop. Then I'll use my um, washed out that brush and I'll just also I'll just paint that guy out. The, the brush, not the brush, the shovel. Paint that out, and you can just kind of see where it goes, right up to his shoes, and the metallics tend to take more than one coat, so you may need to do more than one coat.
know. That's why I like that drying rack, because usually I'll have paint on the table and then I set my piece down and there's paint all over the bottom of my piece. Can you plug it in? We really should do the eyes yet. So we're going to use a different um, phone tonight because you guys seem to like um, that we could zoom in better. So Courtney had a better phone that she was able to get. So we use, we're we using that phone which has the capability for zooming in compared to the other camera. So I'll let that silver dry. And I'm going to sit him aside and we're going to grab our girl so we can do some eyes here quick. Uh, so for the eyes, I usually take my black. Let's see, where's black? And that's our OS476 and she's working on the camera because it's used up the battery. So we're to get some paint out of the way here. And I'm going to pull my water in. So I have my, which brush do I want? I have my artist paintbrush, my 58550 liner, and I'm going to dip it in my water first. And you want to um, do that with your brushes before you start painting. That keeps the paint out of your ferrule. And now I'm going to also dip in that water, and I'm going to grab a pile of the black and just thin it out so it's like ink. Um, by dipping in the water. Um, so we'll do one eye here. And that you want to anchor your piece on the table with your hand and you want to anchor your painting hand onto your piece as well. And I just need to outline, I, I don't, I'm not going to worry about the inside of the eye, I'm going to worry about the outside of the eye and I want to get that nice little round shape. And if it's gobbed up on the inside, that's okay because we'll be covering that up with um, paint. Um, we're focusing on the outside line of the eye. Are we okay? And we'll do that with both eyes. So if you thin that um, black so it's kind of like ink instead of thin um, the paint, it'll flow better off your brush. I can see the in, the inside of the eye is kind of ugly. That's okay, but the outside looks pretty good, and that's what, that's the part we're more worried about right now. So now I have to wash my brush out, and then I have it in my water, and now I want my white. So let's see, I get a little bit of white here, and again I'm going to dip my brush in the water, and I have that water drop on there and I'm going to thin this out so it's thin like ink. It's not quite as thin as water. It's a little bit thicker than water but it's thinner thinner than the paint. So now again she's anchored on the table. I have my painting hand anchored on her. I'm going to start at about 10 o'clock and bring it around till about 1. And I just want to let the outside, the very little black line, to outline her eye. And it's okay if the inside is ugly because the blue will cover that up next. And I got a little too much there. We might have to go back and touch that up. I 
It's just a pencil line of thickness is all you, all you really want. Of the white. Or the black, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and now we need our blue, so I'm going to go with our medium blue and grab a little bit of water. And just dip your brush into your clean water and that'll dip it into your paint and you can thin that out. You can also use a palette knife if you want to do that. Now we'll do her um, right eye because that other one I gotta fix. So now we're gonna do the rest of the eye with the blue. And we only need a little bit of white left. And fix that black on that one before we go any further. So these are really little eyes, they're a little challenging. So there we go, we got our black fixed. Now I can go back to my blue. And we'll go out about 11 o'clock and bring it down. Let a little bit of white, and covered up my black again. Well, this one's got the black covered up too, so you do have to go back and touch things up a little bit just because they're so little. I want to do my center of my eye with the black. If you um, go to YouTube, we have the piggy piggy bank with the eyes. Um, it's a bigger eye, and it's basically the same same principle as this this one. So if you wanted uh, to see see it better because it's bigger, um, you could watch the eye the eye video with the with the piggy bank, and that's on YouTube. Courtney, I'll add the link. It's just that the eye, it's, I, I did the biggie bank because he's got nice big eyes. So now I want to look and make sure my um, black looks kind of the same size in both eyes. So now it's not going, um, it's kind of jagged on this one, so we got to fix it. Courtney says we got a question. Hold on, I'm doing the eyeballs here. So I gotta get my black on the outside here a little bit. It's kind of missing. Bring this one in a little more. So you just want them to look the same. So we got a question, what is it? Sitting here at my sewing machine, sewing masks. Oh, okay, good for you. One up, what do you outline first? I always do it last, it makes, I always do the, that outside first with the black and then I come back with my other colors. Why? Um, why do I do it? Cause that, that I, I can get the outside line and I don't have to worry about the center line because each color covers covers it up if it's kind of ugly until you're doing your last um, black color here. It's really a, it's personal preference, yep. Yeah. So, 
Southers, right? Cardi Southers, not a wrong way to do it. It's it's whatever you like. I, I find it hard to get that same size black line all the way around once the rest of the eye is there. And I can adjust it by with the other colors. So now we need some eyelashes. So we need our black brown. And it'll just take a drop. And again, we're going to thin that out with our water, with our brush. And then I like to drag it on my foil so I can get the excess out. And let's see, she's got eye, she's got little eyebrows. I actually gave her an eyebrow over the top of the eye here. And I guess I did him too. And I'm just touch real light. And I'll um, give her some eyelashes by starting in the black and drawing out. Maybe four or five. And then we'll come and do the other side. And you kind of want to start, you want them to kind of be the same size and on the same size. size. So I start in the black and just draw it out. So there's her little eyelashes, but those are darker than these, so I'll add just a little more color to these. And then you can do the same with him. And if you grab your chalk, you can put the chalk on her cheeks and his cheeks as well. And we'll just use a little, let's throw that here. Need a little brush. So I'm just gonna go into my pink. Or you could do the rosy, the rosy red color is a good one here too. I just rub on the chalk with my bristle brush, wipe on my um, paper towel so I don't have too much and then just blush her cheek a little bit. Come off. So I just use the chalk to give her little blushy cheeks. And then you could seal it with your, spray it with your matte sealer. If you didn't have chalk, you could just use um, one of your pinks. You could just dry brush the cheeks with the pink. So you could now seal it with your spray sealer or your brush on sealer. And then in your package, we have our, and you would do his eyes the same way you did hers, just probably shorter eyelashes. We had the um, brush on glitter to put on the wings. And you can just use a round nylon brush for that. And you just dip in your container and then you just brush it on and you can do um, let it dry and do a second later layer if you want more glitter on it you just brush it out brush back and forth just to brush it out just like you would with the paint and I did the front and the back and then I also you could then um, seal your um, house and I also put it on our dragonfly. Um, you would seal this too first too with the with your spray sealer or brush on sealer whatever you're using, and then you would just brush your brush on. It's the vibrant glitter. It comes. This is the full size product that we carry. Um, you can get it from us. We have different colors too, but this is the vibrant glitter, the one that we used for this box. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice big container. It'll go a long way. You can brush that on, or if you don't want it on, you don't have to put it on either. And I like to let it dry and then do a second layer um, just to get more glitter on. And do the back. And I'm just putting it on the wings. 
and you have plenty um, you should have plenty left over even you can save it for other projects so that's our little dragonfly and then you can do the same with the boy do his eyes and if you wanted um, probably do littler eyelashes um, brush after you seal him you can brush the glitter on his little wings too you just brush it on just like a paint just brush it out so you don't have any rivers and ridges of it and do the back so you would do the whole thing and then once she's dry we also have these little rhinestones in there in your package number five and there's enough to put and I would actually use the E6000 glue I would put it on the little um, little area where it goes there is sticky glue on these but they it kind of comes out after a while mm -hmm. um, but I put the E6000 on there and then you can just put your little rhinestones on each one of her little um, holders and then she also has the little holders on the back. You should have enough for the front and the back. And then I just realized we forgot to do our dots on our um, polka dots on our mushroom. And for that, I would just use my ball stylus, probably the bigger one, because they're flat. And I would dip it in my white. And then you can just go straight up and down mushrooms you could also use the um, if you have a round end to your brush you could use the round end to your brush too if you don't have stylus um, if you are a subscriber you did get styluses in your January box and we have a handful left if anyone wants um, to purchase them you can just send Courtney a message and um, she'll add it to your invoice and you can It'll ship for free then, but they're handy little um, tools because you could even um, use the little fine one, and I'll do that for her, the smallest one that there is, and put a little white tiny dot right at one o'clock in each of her eyes and the little boys as well, and that'll just kind of bring them right to life. So the, the styluses are really handy for all kinds of little things. So I think that's it for this box. We have it, um, we got them both painted. And we didn't do the boy's eyes, but you can see how to, we'll do it the same as the girl because we're running out of time. Just do shorter eyelashes and less rosy cheeks. Um, do a second layer of the silver so it covers really well. Save your um, brush on glitter because you can use that for other projects um, you can get the little rhinestones in your scrapbooking aisle of your craft stores or your Joanne fabrics if you want more of those they come in different sizes and colors they're pretty handy little things they'd even be cute on, on the little mushrooms what do you think she's seen them on the frogs too yeah. I wouldn't doubt it okay. um, let's see is that about it I had a filled rush here all of a sudden. It got kind of late on me. Um, our next box will be our mushroom box. Um, Courtney's got a box for me. Do we get a zoom out then? Let me pull stuff aside here. She's got our mushroom box, which you guys, everyone should have, right? Yes, everything but international. Um, everyone but the international. Um, or if they just. Or if you just ordered this week, you probably don't have it because shipping um, post, postal service is a little slow. So in your box, you will get, can we go out further or? I'm not sure where we're at. Oh, not too bad. We have our instruction sheet, our inventory sheet. And then you would have gotten, you open this up and there's instructions on how to paint out your pieces. You have your extra pro, uh, extra surprise gift, which is our size one flat brush. Um, 
huh? And then along with that, we have our template to make our circles. So you don't have to try to make your own circles. We have a template that we'll be using for the circles. Um, this is your brush, your one flat brush. And then we have this um, tacky stuff for mounting your butterfly onto your mushroom, or you can use the E6000. Um, it's just that that's harder to, to, to get him off if you want it to store him for the winter. So that is an extra in your package as well. And then we have our mushroom cap that's in here. We have our mushroom stem that's in here. We have our set of two butterflies that are in here. So this is the painted mushroom cap. And that's the, te the template is the little circle to make our dots. And then we have our base, which we'll do with the medium light brown and then we'll do the ivory. And then here's our tacky stuff. So you can, and here's our butterflies. We'll do one in blue and one in purple. And you can put this on there. And then that will stick on there like that. Or you can glue it on as well. I prefer the E6000, but this will work too. So. No, I didn't. So you'll have your Clay Magic Flyer with your um, mushroom on it. And then I also have the typed up instructions, which is a new extra this year for our boxes. We have the toadstool and the butterflies, and it, only the subscriber gets those. And then we're going to do a, we should have time to do an extra technique. If you didn't want to do the dots, we'll be doing a crackle technique, and that's just using the Elmer's glue, all glue. So if you don't like this one, you can wait and then you can do this one. And you, can, you don't have to do it in the red and white. You guys can use whatever colors you want. I just kind of went with the red and the white because that's what's on the fairy house. So this isn't sealed yet and that's why it's flat. Otherwise it would be nice and shiny like the other one too. So you can decide if you want the dots or if you want the crackle. And that's what we will start on next week. We'll also go over fixing a piece of bisque that has um, errors in it. Um, we kind of out of time tonight for that, but we'll go over that next time too. We'll have plenty of time because this mushroom paints up really fast. And then we'll also be painting one of the gnomes. Um, we should have time to paint one of the gnomes from the three-piece set that people purchased extra so you can learn how to do this ombre effect. Um, now these guys are, I was thinking, they're really cute. They're very um, adaptable. You could do these in Halloween colors, you could do these in Christmas colors, you could do these in the red, white, and blue colors. I um, mean, for Halloween, you could wrap the little bandages on there so he looks like a little mummy. There's tons of things. They're really versatile. It's a set of three. Um, yep, so I'll try to do some examples of these too if we have extra time, if I have extra time. And you can add these to your you want to purchase these we can ship them in your box again there should be room in the next box it's 1999 for a set of three this is the um this is the little one and then there's one more he's holding a wooden stick i didn't get him painted yet either so but it's a set of three you can add them to your box i have like 15 sets poured if anybody um thinks they want any of them to make sure we have enough so I think that's about it. We'll start on this next week. Hope you guys have a great week and a great weekend. Happy Memorial Weekend. Happy Memorial Day. Um, we won't be doing messages again on this weekend. We're both taking off, so we'll catch up with you guys on Tuesday. Um, have a great week and see you next Thursday. Bye.